What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network and the Hard Knock Digital Culture, back again with another episode of The Capsule. Now, this is the snippet show where we talk about the latest and greatest in the happening in AAA genre defining gaming news. And boy, and bo- boy, oh boy, do we have a doozy for you today. Today's video is titled The Evolution of Xbox and PlayStation lessons and competition and innovation learned and this is going to be our finale of a current series that we're running um you may have seen previous podcasts around this where we're talking about quote how did we get here with xbox there's a lot of new gamers out here a lot of people that don't understand the dynamics why people are bickering or infighting within the xbox community why xbox is like one of the most lauded platforms. Like why are they one of the most most lauded and negatively talked about platforms in gaming history? How how did this come about? The the maker of Halo and the curator of Gears of War and Mass Effect and Bioshock, how how are they seen in such a negative light where other platforms that were not as near successful or looked at more favorably? We're gonna talk about all that, all right? But before we do all that, do us a huge favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications please so you know when we're dropping these doses all right so let's get started we want to welcome you and in this video we're deep diving the evolution of xbox and playstation their promises pitfalls and the importance of healthy competition in the shaping of the gaming future all right so we're going to do this in several sections so let's start off with section one the significance of healthy competition. Look, gaming history is marked by fierce rivalry, driving innovation and excellence. Xbox and PlayStation have been at the forefront, battling for supremacy. Competition has fueled their drive to deliver top tier AAA games, pushing the boundaries of creativity. Now, Xbox burst upon, uh, upon the scene uh, with captivating AAA titles that define the sixth um, generation in so many ways when it came to Western development. Iconic games like Halo, Knights of the Old Republic, and Gears of War became hallmarks of Xbox's identity. Now, PlayStation's dominance was challenged by Xbox in the seventh generation. And with that success, they were it was spurring them to redefine their strategy. Sony's pivot led to the PlayStation 4, a console beloved by developers and gamers alike. The scrutiny and competition between these two giants have inspired innovation, shaping the gaming landscape as we know it today. All right. So, but let's let, let's get into the nooks and crannies of why the ire for Xbox? What is behind it? Let's talk about it. Section two, Xbox's unfulfilled promises. Now, the last decade has seen Xbox promise grand visions for gaming's future, but not all have come to fruition. Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox and Windows Gaming, his tenure brought bold promises from enhanced AAA games to cloud gaming dominance and so forth. Yet some fans feel let down as Xbox struggled to deliver on these uh, commitments. One of the most vivid examples to date is the Xbox Series S. While a good option for price conscious customers, the the console has been criticized as a potential bottleneck for developers. Now this bottleneck has spilled over to the more powerful sibling, the Xbox Series X. And due to the heavily enforced parity clauses between both iterations, gamers of the more expensive model miss out too. Now, what would be otherwise third party games um, that have what would would otherwise excuse me be third-party games they have been turned into the proverbial timed exclusive due to the xbox series s's inability to handle features in games like Baldur's gate we see Baldur's gate currently seeing a delay in its release date due to bottlenecks that they're experiencing with the series s but it's not just third-party games where this is becoming a problem that is also affecting the X. The absence of split screen in Forza Motorsport recently raised concerns about preserving legacy features, which too may be tied to the Series S bottleneck. 
These unfulfilled promises raise questions about Xbox's direction and its ability to regain its former glory. And with that, let's look in contrast what's been happening with PlayStation. Section three, PlayStation's resurgence. Now in contrast, PlayStation's journey has been a tale of redemption, rising from PlayStation 3's challenges to its resurgence with the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 3 era was one where the company's arrogance due to the previous success of the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 1 done them in, <laughs> for, for lack of a better word or better, better description. The expensive development Albatross platform did not leave a lot to be desired for the game maker earlier on in that generation. It was so bad for the PlayStation 3 that a 60% failure rate of the competing Xbox 360, also known as the Red Ring of Death, didn't, couldn't even help the PlayStation gain more traction. Tacking incidents like the poorly managed network that led to 20 plus days of online outage, third party developer woes, and arrogant statements around affordability of the console, such as gamers will just have to get a second job. And there you see the platform's problems were mounting. However, the company made a declaration to gamers to do better and to meet expectations. And oh my, did they begin to deliver. The subsequent PlayStation 4 era marked Sony's dedication to quality first party games, earning accolades for titles like God of War, Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. Sony's commitment to both gamers and developers led to the reclamation of the high-end console throne. All right. So with that, now that we've contrasted that, sh that brief history of how Xbox really came in and, and, and let the trailblaze, but now we're disappointing and PlayStation, how they, you know, went from an arrogant tone to now seeing success again. Then we got to look back at Xbox. What is causing them to, to be in such this, this undesirable place at the moment when it comes to consumer reception? And I think the answer is we'll, we'll discover in section four. Xbox's abandonment of the winning formula. Now, some argue that Xbox's struggles stem from deviating from their winning formula. While some point to PlayStation success as bandwagonism, Xbox's earlier victory with the 360 contradicts this. The real issue might be Xbox's shift away from its winning strategy. The clash of delivering stellar AAA games versus appeasing their new CEO's vision has left Xbox in a challenging position. What are we talking about? Well, we got a CEO that wants to be delivery and cloud first. They wanna make expensive investments in doing so. However, they've abandoned vital things that add to the art like second party deals and, in, and ensuring that there's um, sound quality check and quality control behind what they release. They're more focused on ballooning the the quantity of a subscription service and making sure that games release in cadence hence why we got things like redfall with that said there's maybe some other problem in here in this whole scenario that is to blame for why maybe some of the uh the miss of the mark has become accepted where we might have situations where gamers are cutting off their nose to spike their face. What are, we talk, what are we talking about? Well, let's talk about it in section five. The apologists versus accountability. Now the gaming community's divide between apologists and accountable consumers affects the future of AAA games the most. Blindly defending one's preferred brand hampers the push for better quality and innovation in gaming. Ultimately holding companies accountable ensures the continuous improvement of AAA titles. We just talked about this in a recent podcast where you had people tell things that were unsubstantiated. There's gonna be 40 to 50 frame deltas between the Xbox and PlayStation 5. What does that even mean? It's just a bunch of word salad to make it sound like that the Xbox series was going to heavily outperform the PlayStation, right? And 
The Xbox Series S is not a bottleneck. These developers are lying. They want PlayStation to win. All of this quote unquote capping for a brand for no reason besides wanting to belong has confused and misled consumers. And again, people have done this. They have sacrificed the, the beneficial knowledge that could have been cascaded to their fellow gamers for the sake of how a brand is framed. A brand that most of them are not getting any kickbacks from. Sad. With that said, that leads us to our conclusion. As we conclude our exploration, it's clear that the rivalry between Xbox and PlayStation, their promises and their struggles all contribute to the evolution of gaming. Healthy competition drives innovation, inspiring groundbreaking experiences that keep us immersed in the virtual worlds we love. The future of gaming relies on passionate gamers holding companies to their com commitments, ensuring a vibrant landscape of top-notch AAA games. Thank you for joining us on this journey through gaming history. Remember, it's not just about the console wars, but about the experiences they bring to us all. And with that said, folks, that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below, because like we always say, who cares what I think? But if you like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They'll lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, Cloud Dosage. With all that said, peace. Have a wonderful gaming day.